What's up guys? I hope everybody's having a really good day. I'm gonna set the camera up just a little bit better and we're gonna get started here in just a minute. Super, super, super excited for Bible study tonight. Hope everybody's doing really well. I really, really, really do. Hope that you guys are having a great week. I know I am. Yep. What's up guys? We're going to get started here in about maybe five minutes or so. We uh, do this every single uh, Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I um, am going to talk about something near and dear to my heart. I had a lot of uh, a lot of tragedy last week and a lot of um, uh, had a lot of tragedy, but a lot of incredible blessings that came from it. So really excited to start to talk about that tonight um, and just kind of go over it with you guys. Uh, <clears throat> I hope everybody's had a great week. If you are glad that the snow is gone, put a thumbs up in the comments. I will throw mine up right there. I am so over that snow, man. We lived in Louisiana and we had a week's worth of snow. It was like this, it was like this 100 year, like this 100 year snow that was just like, I don't know, for about a day, it was pretty cool. After that, I was like, eh, I'm over it. And by day like five or six, I was like, man, I'm really over it. I'm sick of it. I realized real quickly to be thankful for the, for the humidity and be thankful for the, uh, Oh, what's it called? Uh, not the humidity. Yeah, the humidity and the heat compared to dealing with the snow, man. I ain't about that snow. Mm -mm. Nope. Fun to drive in, though. Anyways, uh, we're going to get started here in about five minutes or so. Uh, or maybe maybe like three or four minutes, something like that. If you guys can hear me, make sure to put a thumbs up in the comments. Um, I figured the group is going to consistently get smaller as we kind of dig into the depths of what God really, really wants to talk about. Uh, so, like I said, usually we had 30 or so, and uh, since we started talking about real serious stuff, <laughs> we've been dwindling right around 15 or so, which, which, granted, you know, not everybody's going to take the word as serious as they need to. Uh, some people will, some people won't, but um, we're really here to encourage you to do that because uh, in our walks with God, it can mean some incredible things can happen, uh, but it, it's not, this walk is not a walk without trial, that's for sure. It's not a walk without test. In fact, if you're hopping in a walk with God and thinking everything is like happy-go-lucky, you know, and, 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 and everything smells like roses, you know, it is like that for a while, and it, it, it can be like that, but the Satan will just attack the crap out of you sometimes, and it's obnoxious. So um, tonight, I'm going to share a, uh, a pretty big testimony um, of some stuff that's been going on in my life over the last week. I have been um, uh, relatively distant. I have had probably 40 or 50 of you reach out in message and uh, just check on me, and I appreciate that. I, I really, really, really do. I have not, um, uh, I haven't replied to a lot of folks just because of the fact that I've, I, you know, lots of times whenever we go through something, uh, we need to we need to remove ourselves. Um, from all the voices that are around us and just seek God's voice. I think that is almost the best course of action 95% of the time. Um, and to seek wisdom from those that, who we um, uh, who we respect uh, from a spiritual perspective. So, um, yeah. So, <clears throat> anyways, I love you guys. We're going to get started here in just a couple of minutes. Don't forget to share this afterwards. Don't, don't forget to invite your friends next time. Um, I've got some pretty incredible testimonies uh, and some things I'm going to share with you guys tonight. So if you're ready for it, throw a thumbs up there. Uh, like I said, don't forget to share it afterwards, and uh, we're going to get started here. By the way, guys, if you have any prayer requests whatsoever, do not be afraid. Make sure to drop those prayer requests in the comments uh, because uh, we've got a really good group of people here that will pray with you and pray for you. So don't be afraid. Drop those things in the comments, and uh, we'll definitely, definitely, definitely knock them out. God's a prayer answer in God. I mean, I tell you what, guys, <clears throat> within the last week, this is just really cool, just kind of as an FYI. Within the last week, um, uh, God, uh, people, I've had like, I had this lady, I had this guy walk in my office the other day, and he got electrocuted back in 2004. And it was on his arm, right? It was like, I don't know, somewhere right around here. And he uh, dealt with like this burning sensation uh, for the majority of you know his life right there. And he started talking to me about it. <clears throat> I'm going to start sharing testimony. And he started talking about it. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pray. And then we're going to hop right in the testimony. Because there's tons of testimonies i got to tell you guys. Just amazing. So, guys, if you had any prayer requests, make sure to put them in the comments. We're about to go hop into prayer right now. So, love you guys. We're going to get started here in just a second. Lord, 
I thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace, Lord. I hope that everybody's praying with me. Lord, I pray you guide us, pray you strengthen us, Lord. You see each and every prayer request that's in there, Lord. I rebuke about any distractions. Lord, I loose your spirit of healing to touch us, God. Lord, I rebuke about the spirit of infirmity. I loose your spirit of healing to touch us, God. Lord, I pray that if anybody's dealing with a migraine right now, Lord, I rebuke and I bind that and I cast that out. If anybody's dealing with anything whatsoever is going on, Lord, I pray you'd open our mind to understanding and open us to revelation, Lord. Lord, I pray you continue to watch over us, Lord. I pray you'd send your ministering angels to minister to us and your warring angels got to fight with us, God. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and get started. There we go. We've got a good group one now. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share a couple of really incredible testimonies that have happened over the last week. So if you are on here and you need a healing, you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. If you need a healing right now, you need to pay attention. You need to watch. You need to soak this up. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some testimonies that God has done just over the last week, right around the last week or two. Just, I'm going to share some testimonies. And then after that, at the end of this uh, video, we're going to pray. And I believe that God's going to heal you, whatever you got going on. So that's going to be a part of this. So I'm going to share some testimonies with you real quick. Then we're going to go into the message. Um, love you guys. We do this every single Monday, 7 p.m. Super excited that everybody's on. So testimony number one. I had a man come in my office, a uh, nice older guy. And he got electrocuted back in 2004. We started talking about God. And one thing we talk about on this channel is, 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 is saying things to open up conversations so that God can come into work. It's not just simply, hey, how's your day going? You know, I, lots of times I do ask that. I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? How's your day going? How's your family? Whatever. Do I know these people? No, I don't. But what I do is I ask questions that facilitate an opportunity for God to come in and work. And we need to make sure that we're doing that. Uh, whether it be Walmart, whether it be the cashier, you can touch you can touch the cashier, uh, you can touch the cashier's heart at Walmart. You know what I'm saying? You could, you know, there there are plenty of people out there. You pass by every single day that you can reach out. I mean, guys, we live in a hurt and dying and sucky world. If we're being real, and they just want some, they just want somebody to tell them that they're loved. They just want somebody to tell them that hey, man, you don't have to live in depression. You don't have to live with migraines. You don't have to live with back pain because I know a Jesus that heals it all. And we need to be able to walk around. And it's, that boldness isn't going to start until you start. A lot of people, what we want to do is we want to pray for opportunities, but we don't want to use it. We don't want to use the things that God's already given us. And God's saying, hey, if you'll just use the, 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 the brain that I gave you, if you just use the faith that I gave you, if you just use the talents that I gave specifically you, I'm going to give you plenty of opportunities. But the thing is, you've got to be able to access and use what you already got in order for God to add more. So anyway, so I had this guy walk in my office and he's like, hey man, he's like, I, I, I was electrocuted back in 2004. He's like, man, he's like right here, almost all the time. I deal with some burning sensation. He said, when I, he said whenever I, he said, I grabbed a hold of a 110 wire. He said, you know, whenever you get electrocuted, whenever you get electrocuted, um, you, you, you can't let go. So it said it ripped all the tendons, all of his muscles, all the tendons, all that mess, all up in his arm. He said so many problems, so many issues throughout the years. This is 17 years ago. He walks in my office. We start talking about God. And I, and I keep telling you guys, I keep telling you guys, we have to be able to ask questions that facilitate miracles. If we ask people how they're doing, don't just be like, oh, that sounds good. If there's a problem or if they say, man, I'm doing all right, or if you feel like something's going on, facilitate that reaction. Take, a, take advantage, take an opportunity right there to pray for them. If you really want to grow in your walk with God, then I'm telling you, you've got to start reaching out. So this guy and him, we're, we're talking, I said, it just, this, it, just, it just hit me. I was like, you know what? I said, hey, man, let's pray. God's going to heal it. He's like, hmm, okay, all right. You know, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. You know, cool, we'll pray. This man has had pain in his arm because he got electrocuted for, what was that? 17, was it 17 years? Something like that. 17 years. God healed it. God healed it in an instant. You should have seen the look on his face, man. You should have seen the look on his face. He was like, oh my gosh. Like, what? What just happened? I said, that's God. That's Jesus. Jesus just healed you. I mean, what an incredible testimony. It was such a crazy testimony that he said, dude, he's like, he's like my wife, my wife has scoliosis. She's out there in the car. And I said, bring her in. I said, God's going to heal her. See, see, I, I used to walk in this level of faith that was about that big. And it was literally the faith of a mustard seed. And yeah, people would get healed occasionally. You know what I'm saying? It happened once a month or it happened twice a month or whatever the case may be. 
And then, and then through my experience over the last two to three weeks, I have been walking in this level of boldness that's just like, okay, God's going to do it. No ifs, no ands, no buts. But my, and I'm not saying that to boost myself up. I'm saying that, that it came from starting somewhere. It came from starting somewhere. It came from praying to that person in Walmart. It came, it came from, from lifting my hands up, you know, in, in prayer, in church. It started somewhere. And I encourage you guys that if you're interested in the real walk with guys, start somewhere. Start somewhere. Pick a date. Pick a date and say, I'm not smoking anymore. Sacrifice that for God. You know you ain't supposed to be doing it. Pick, 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 pick a, pick a, uh, and this is not condemnation. This is just me saying, hey, man, there is a better life out there that God wants you to live. Hey, man, pick a date. Put that, de- put that drink down. Pick a date. Hey, man, put that depression down. Pick a date. Make it today. Make it tomorrow. But start somewhere where you start pouring your cup that's full of flesh out and where God can come in and move. And I'll tell you what, you know what he did? Right in that moment, he had faith. And the Bible says we're two more ground into one thing. It shall be done. So he goes outside of his truck. And he grabs his wife. He starts explaining to his wife, this is what happened. And his wife's kind of like, mm, okay. And she comes in like this. And what I mean by the word, I mean like that. Like she, she has scoliosis, right? Scoliosis is, is the, the deformity of a spine, right? So you see somebody walking or whatever. She comes up like this. She's, you know, kind of kind of like that in a nutshell, right? And uh, so, so she comes in kind of like walking like this. And, and it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. But you know what? She's dealt with it her entire life. And you know what? Her husband saw what just happened to him. We prayed, and I kid you not, that lady, that lady with scoliosis walked out of here with a straight spine standing straight up. Now, if that's not a praise God, hallelujah testimony, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. And I don't know why I'm even going into this, because this is not a part of my message. I just feel like telling somebody, man, if you just step out on faith and you start walking with God and you would really start giving up those things in your life that you don't that you know shouldn't be there. There's an incredible world out there for you to see. And it just starts with that one domino of I'm not going to do this anymore. And whenever that one domino falls and I'm not going to do this anymore, boom, another one falls. And then boom, all of a sudden, you're living a completely redeemed life. You're walking around in Walmart. You're walking around in your job. You're praying for people left and right. You're seeing miracles happen. Don't you want to see that? That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Guys, look around us. Let me tell you something. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. You walk around in Walmart. I don't want you using Walmart so much. You walk around somewhere. I guarantee you one out of every ten person Five people you're walking around is dealing with some sort of pain in their body, some sort of mental pain, depression, anxiety, you know, whatever. They're dealing with something. And all they want, all they want is for somebody to say, hey, man, you're loved. Hey, man, you're cared for. You know, Jesus really cares about you. That's all they want. That's all that they want. They just want somebody to tell them that they're loved and cared for. I mean, guys, wouldn't you want that? Say you're going through a tough time. Say you're going through a really bad time. Uh, Don't you want somebody to say, man, you know what? God's going to bring you through it. Or man, you know what? God's going to heal you. Or man, you know what? I'm willing to take on this struggle with you and pray with you. That's exactly what I'm going to go in tonight. Because man, guys, I had been going through it. Guys, I had been going through it. Anybody ever felt like Jesus was asleep in the boat? This guy... This guy, this guy right here goes through a lot of tests. Once again, I'm sure everybody does, but I'm just going to explain to you tonight what our Bible study is going to be about is going to be Jesus being asleep in the boat. If you're seeking answers, you need to pay attention. If you're seeking healing, you need to pay attention. And you need to get serious about this walk with God because God is right here in this video and he is like, okay, let's go for it. Guys, the the understanding is about to hit you. I'm telling you, you need to pay attention. Tonight we're going to go into Mark 4. We're going to go to Mark chapter 4 tonight. So if you feel like you need answers, you better pay attention. My gosh. I'm I'm, I'm I'm going to give you the testimony that's leading up to the teaching just real quick. Okay? For the last year and a half, almost two years, God has had me on a path of starting four new companies. I own a business management company right now, okay? And he's been working on me, working on me, working on me, working on me. And I'm telling you guys, you guys have seen the progress. If you you have followed me for any amount of time, any amount of time, 
right? You know that the Lord has led me to buy a tractor, a skid steer, equipment, all this other really cool stuff, right? Really cool stuff. And, and, and he's led me to buy all of this stuff. Ooh, guys, you need to get this. Ooh, man. You need to get this, man. So hey, over this last year and a half, you, you guys have seen me a, a part. You guys have been a part of my testimony one-on-one. -on -one. You guys have been a part of my testimony. By the way, you're, you're joining us for the first time new. I welcome you here. You're an incredible person. God loves you and God cares for you. And, and if you're interested in that, you need to stay tuned. You need to tune in every single Monday at 7 because there's some hope and there's a whole new life that you have that's coming. You just got to, ooh, Jesus, you just wait. You just continue doing what you're doing. You just continue sacrificing. You continue walking after God. It's going to happen for you. It's going to happen for you. And Satan is going to attack. But you know what? You just keep pressing forward because it's going to happen for you. God's promises are yes and amen. It's going to happen for you. You just mark my words. Hey, now I want you to do something right now. If you believe that your miracle is right around the corner, if, you're, if you believe your miracle is right around the corner, I want you to put a hallelujah in the comments. I want you to put praise God in the comments because you know what? Before any miracle happens, before any miracle happens, we need to be praying and we need to be praising God like it's already happened. That's faith. Praising God before it happens is faith. That's what it is. So you guys have followed me in this journey of starting these new companies. One of the companies is a Christian apparel company. Guys, listen, one of the biggest things that God has ever put on my heart is to wear stuff that, exempt, that glorifies him. Because guess what? Even if you're afraid, let me just tell you something. Even if you're afraid to go up and walk and, and, and tell somebody Jesus loves them or whatever the case may be, you're new in your walk or you're new in this stepping out on faith thing, right? You know what you can do? You can wear a shirt that says Jesus loves you. Or you can wear something that exemplifies God that does two things. Number one, that opens up the door for conversation to, for those who are willing to receive it. Number two, it, number two, it gives you the opportunity not, not to, to open up the door themselves or open, up your, to open the door with God. Anyways, we we talk about that later. So, anyways, so you guys have seen this journey, okay? Let me just tell you about the last week because over the last week, it almost fell apart. But little did I know, little did I know that it was God's plan all along, okay? All right, so I have been wanting, the Lord has been putting on my heart, by this, by this, by this, by this, and then boom, this piece of property came up. Now, let me tell you something. Remember that 238 number that we talk about all the time on this channel? It's, it's one of my favorite scriptures. is Acts 238, okay? It says, repent. Every one of you, if you're baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I've done so, so many Bible studies about this, but that 238 number pops up whenever... Uh, and God wants me to be, make a big purchase or say he wants me to give somebody a discount. Now, that sounds dumb. Or say he wants me to do something. That number pops up all the time. Okay. So um, anyways, so I, I, I'm looking for this. Prop. I'm like, okay, God, I've I, I, I purchased the necessary things you want me to purchase. I've been obedient. I followed you. I've been reading. I've been praying. Have I been perfect? No. Heck no. I, I, I have not been perfect at all. I have not been perfect at all. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions we have in Christianity is the fact that is the fact that we come to God and we're like, well, God, I'm not perfect. You really can't use me. Bro, we come to God because we're imperfect. We come to God because he can deal with our flaws. Guys, let me tell you something. I dealt with gluttony for a bit. I was almost 300 pounds at one particular time. By the way, if you're overweight and you're watching this, God can really help you get out of that situation. I'm telling you. I'm really telling you, it just takes, just like we just talked about those dominoes, it just takes a, hey, you know what, I just, I'm, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat just one less cracker this time, and then all of a sudden you're eating two less crackers, right? I was to the point, I was so bad that I was making myself throw up food. I'm just telling you, I am not perfect. I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And the only way that I know how to get a hold of God is by reading, praying, and studying. So if you're going through some troubles, you're going through some trials, read, pray, and study, guys. It's as simple as that, and God will open up the door. You start sacrificing your time and start giving stuff to God, God's like, boom, I'm ready to use you. Let's go. And some of you, I just feel in my heart, some of you have dropped your, you have dropped your walk along the way. You have put your walk down, and you have dropped your long, maybe you had a real strong walk with God, and you put it down, and you dropped it at one particular time, and God's saying, hey, man, bro, I love you. I'm here, and though, yes, you took the wrong route, Hey, I'm right here waiting. You just come on back, and I'm going to fulfill every bit of those things that I promised you. Woo, just like Abraham. Abraham, right? Abraham, 
God promised him a son. God promised him something. What did he do? He got impatient. Mm. And patience will kill somebody real quick. And patience will throw you into a loop real quick. And patience will lose you a lot of money real quick. Anyways, God promised him a son. He messed up. He screwed up. He had a, he had a baby outside of wedlock. And you know what? That promise, after he got his stuff straight, that promise was still fulfilled. And he had Isaac. He still had that promise even though he messed up. So guess what, guys? I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But we work with a God who specializes in working with imperfect people. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants a relationship with you, man. He does. So, man, I just don't know why I'm just going off on this. But he does, man. He cares about you. He just wants to give you, he wants you, wants you to give you this big old hug. I mean, there's, I can just feel, there's so much love and there's so much passion that God brings to the table that you never know existed. A lot of you guys deal with some rough childhoods. A lot of you guys deal with some things, some unfortunate things that happened in the past. Maybe you got cheated on. Man, I've been there. <laughs> maybe you, um, um, you know, maybe a family member hurt you. Maybe you got church hurt living deep down inside of you. God can come in and God can heal all of that. Man, he can heal all that. So fast forward to my testimony for this last week. This last week was the final closing on the property. Final closing on the property, right? Signed a contract about, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago before Snowmageddon hit us, which I was cool with snow. Me and one of my best friends, man, we went to the side of the interstate, and we took the, we took the roof of my golf cart, and we slid down the interstate. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Oh, man, it was sketchy, too. It was real sketchy. I ain't gonna lie, but it was fun. We had a good time. <laughs> Anyways, um, I put a little, I put a little post out about it. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, best. Uh, what's it called? Uh, what is it? Uh, really good idea to start whenever you ask your friends. Hey, man, you want to get burgers in a snowstorm? We did. We cooked burgers in a snowstorm. Cooked burgers in a snowstorm and went to the side of the interstate and slid down. Man, that was fun. Anyway, so, <laughs> oh Jesus. All right. So, anyways, let's fast forward. So, uh, I love you guys. If you guys are enjoying this, man. Make sure to share it with somebody. Make sure to make sure to throw a thumbs up in the comments. Because guess what, guys? I love you guys. And you know what? At the end of the day, there's a ton of people on here that need some help. And there's a ton of people on here that need some prayer. So if any given times, any of you 35, 40, 50 people get any inkling whatsoever that you want to reach out, lift your hands, start worshiping God right there in your own room, just do it. Just do it. Just go for it. Because God is wanting to come into your life right now and make a change. He's wanting to come into your life and say, okay, I'm going to remove that addiction from you. I'm going to remove that pornography addiction from you. I'm I'm going to remove that, 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 that uh, alcohol addiction from you. I'm going to remove that gossiping mouth you've got. But you know what? He, he can't do it unless you work with him. you got to be able to be willing to work with him. So let's fast forward. So last week, um, we're about to close on this property, right? Okay. So um, I, I have, I have uh, one particular employee, right? I, I, not, not one particular employee, but, but I have a, a particular employee and um, uh, she does. She she did a lot for me. I mean, did a lot for me. I mean, she great, 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 great at what she does. And one thing over the last couple of weeks is I've been praying. God, open the door where you need it open. Shut the door where you need to be shut. Because here's the thing: going into buying this property is a big financial investment. Going to build all these new facilities, big financial investments. Okay. So I'm like, God, I need I need all the direction in the world right now. And by the way, God has honored it. Over the last two to three weeks, I've been getting nonstop. Visions, nonstop words, nonstop confirmations. By the way, if you guys do not have a book that you write everything that the Lord tells you in it, you need to get one. You need to get one because guess what? It, it, once God starts working in your life so much, it just becomes too much to keep up with to the point where you have to keep a dead gum notebook. Get you a notebook. I'm telling you, start off writing in it daily. Even if it's just something as simple as, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. And, and, and here's what I do, just as an FYI. I'm going to give you guys a great example. You Do you know, Do you know? I don't have the best memory in the world, just FYI. I prayed about it. The Lord will bless me with a great memory one day. And I'm not saying it's a bad memory. But one thing I do is, and this may sound dumb, this one may sound dumb, but, but, but it's a really good technique to get answers or, or, or to keep up with the answers that God gives you. And it's a, I call it the square system, right? I'm going to just show it to you. All right, so look, it's as simple as this, okay? So what I do is I will write the question out to the side on what I feel, what, a question that I need answered by God, right? And then I write two boxes. I write a yes box and a no box. And then in that moment, in my spirit, 
in my spirit, in that moment of what I'm feeling and what I'm getting from the Lord, I will write a, 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 a if, that's if I have a feeling. If I have a feeling about it, if I have an inkling about it, I will, I will shade in half of a box. I'll shade in half of a box. I'm giving you guys some good technical stuff here. Okay, what that means is, because here's the thing, in that moment when you ask the question and say you wait till tomorrow, you're not going to remember how you felt about that question in that particular moment. But what this does is this logs, whenever you asked your question, how you felt the Lord was going to answer that question. And I usually stick with yes or no's just because it's a lot easier. Um, so I'll shade whatever box I feel is correct. And then whenever I get my confirmation, I will come back and shade it in. That's one of the, re that's one of the ways that um, I, you know, I ask God, hey, you know, yes or no, yes or no. Because like, I got a lot of questions. I can talk sometimes. I ain't going to lie. I got a lot of questions for God. Uh, so anyway, so um, I, this, this property is a big financial investment. These buildings that we're building are, are big financial inve investments. We're, we're building a, a dairy farm. We're building um, a, an apparel company. We're going to go into several different avenues. And God has been blessing it every single step of the way. But let me tell you what Satan does. If God starts to bless you. Oh, Satan will come against you like a son of a gun. I can't tell you how many times I just wanted to stomp him out, man. Stomp him out. But you know how we stomp the enemy out? Do you you want to know you want to know the best way, the best way to get back at Satan? You want to know? Are you going through crap right now? Are you going through problems right now? The best way you can kick Satan in the face is to continue to reach out more than ever before. That's right. See, if Satan kicks you and you lay down, let me tell you something. All he has to do next time is just kick you one time and then you, you just lay down. But you know how you get back at him? You look at him and say, you know what? You keep kicking me. You keep making me mad. I'm going to keep on reaching. I'm going to keep on praying for people. People are going to continue to come in my office and get healed on a routine basis because you're a moron. I can't stand him. I can't stand him. Absolutely cannot stand him. Man. Mm. Just. Oh, man, if I get to heaven, when I get to heaven and we see Satan, I swear if he's about that tall, I'm like, God, God, I wear boots like, I don't know, half the time. Can I do it? Can I stop him? Go. Oh, gosh. Anybody want to stomp Satan? Man, if you want to stomp Satan, just, just, just put in the comments, stomp, stomp, or just like, I don't know, a boot or something. You know, I, I don't know if you guys ever gamed, but when I was a little kid, I used to play Halo and they used to game and we used to mess with kids all the time. And we'd ask them and, 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 and people that people that didn't game back in the day won't get this. But if you do, if you did game back in the day, you will get this. You, you used to ask them, Hey, what's the, what's the shape of Florida? Right. And then they say a boot. And be like, exactly. And then you kick him out of your party. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Anyways, I was actually a really nice guy in high school. <laughs> for the most part. Um, but um, anyway, so fast forward to the story. That's too much personal information. <laughs> um, so fast forward to the story. So um, whenever you start doing things right, be expecting attacks. Be expecting things to go wrong. Be expecting things to... Um, be expecting things to uh, uh, Satan to come against you in some form or fashion. Because over the last year and a half, the Lord has had me building up lots of assets, lots of different little things that are going to basically fuel the future in a nutshell. And this property is one of the biggest purchases in those string of events. Because without a piece of property to build everything on, then you don't really have anything but a bunch of equipment and a bunch of promises that were never fulfilled or, or may take more time to get fulfilled. Um, I missed the first property. If well, I say I missed the first property, uh, I'm still always up in the air about that, but I got this second one. So let me just tell you what happened. I started praying and I said, God, I want you to open doors and I want you to shut doors. And I said, Lord, I said, I need some help. I said, we're coming down to the wire. I've got questions. I've got questions on how these facilities need to be built. I mean, we're talking about going down to dimensions, talking about going down to structural differences, talking about going to placement, feet, everything down to a T. You know why I get that specific with God? Because God cares about the specifics. God really does. Let me just tell you this, that, 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 that I am trying to build this the way that Noah built his ark. Because guess what? Noah, his ark was solid. You know why? Because he obeyed the Lord. I'm telling you, man, if, 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 if Noah would have been like, you know what? 
I don't like that gopher wood. I think I like cherry for the uh, the fireplace that doesn't exist in here. You know, I think I like I think I like cypress. Lord, I like cypress. No, we got to get specific. We got to get specific with God. See, the thing is, is that if you want specific answers, you got to pray specific prayers. If I'm telling you, you want specific answers. You guys, and God will start answering your specific prayers. Make sure to go in and write them in your book. You start writing them down. You start making that sacrifice of writing them down because it's something that you normally don't do. He'll start answering your prayers. So fast forward to this. Um, so on, um, I, I'm praying, I'm seeking God, and I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm like, you know what? I, um, sorry, somebody tried to join my screen here. Guys, please don't try to join my screen right now. Um, I love you, but please don't try to join my screen. Um, anyways, so it pops up, and it's like, hey, we want to join your screen. And I'm like, no, I'm teaching. <laughs> oh, anyways, so, but I love you anyways. But um, so I, I, I started specifically praying. I said, God, I want you to open doors, and I want you to shut doors. I really want you to open doors because because going forward, I need the right people going forward. Going forward, I need the right facility going forward, right? So I found this piece of property uh, back in November, and the Lord put on my heart. He's like, hey, man, he's like, he's like, you're going to pay X amount of dollars for this property. And and he said, he said, I want you to offer this much, but it's going to take about two months for this guy to come around and accept your offer. I said, okay, all right, sounds good. So I offered him. He completely rejected my offer. It's on the low side, but you know what? Hey, that's what God told me to do. Felt the presence of God, felt the peace of God everywhere. And um, kind of cool that I was out there looking at the property with the realtor. And uh, before I actually made an official offer. And remember that two point three that that, that that 238 scripture, Acts 238, repent, that ever one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sins, you shall receive the, uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the evidence of speaking other tongues. We've already talked about that a million times. If you're interested in that, go to my YouTube channel. I got a three-part series on salvation. It is there. It's really good. So um, I'm not saying it's really good because I taught it. I'm just saying the word is really, really good. It connects a lot of dots. I've asked a lot of people, why do you believe what you believe? And most often uh, what I get is, well, I was raised in this or or, or my mom said this or um, uh, I was taught this or whatever. But it's almost never like I've actually read, I've studied, I've prayed, and this is the stuff that I've actually come up with from my own due diligence. So, and the scary part about that is, is if we're raised in Christianity and, and, and everybody around us is lukewarm, we feel comfortable in lukewarmness and that's not cool. That's not okay with God. And we need to be able to read. We need to be able to study. We need to be able to dig deeper beyond our own understanding. We need to be able to put denominational bias aside and we need to dig into the word for what it actually says. Because I'm telling you, you want to, you, you, I'm, I'm going to blow up your world right now. Did you know the, the Bible actually says that you have to be born of the water? You have to be born of the spirit. Otherwise you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. Read John 3. John 3, in the same exact chapter that Jesus says, um, uh, uh, John 3, 16, he also talks about to Nicodemus, you have to be born of the water, you have to be born of the spirit, otherwise you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. Now I'm telling you, man, I, I walk with God is more than just believing. Way more, way more. And this whole thing it just drives me nuts when people say, well, baptism is a public profession of your faith. That's not biblical. That You can't find that one time. It's not biblical. Baptism is 100% a necessity for salvation. Jesus specifies that in John chapter 3. Just go read it. It's literally as simple as just cracking it up the Bible. Read the conversation between him and Nicodemus. Ah, anyways, you need to go watch that three. Some of you guys need to go watch that three-part series. It's on my YouTube channel. It's called Christ Built. Now, I used to update it all the time. I don't update it much anymore. I'm going to get back to that whenever we start building these structures because I'm going to take you guys along with me building all these new companies, and I'm so excited about it. But going back to that property... The property literally next door to the seven acres I bought out in Benton was 2.38 acres, 238. Now, you just can't tell me that there's not a God. So, Satan has been fighting this thing. I mean, fighting it, right? And you know what? I had a week or two there where I was just getting revelation. Everything from God. Everything was good. And then, boom. Hey, God, I, need, I really need you to open doors. And really need, I need you to shut some doors, too. So, it was either Monday night or Tuesday morning. Monday night or Tuesday morning. I uh, either was going to, I was going to be praying and I had a vision of, boom, a door shut, like slamming shut, like angry, like, boom, door shut. I'm like, what in the world? Why is the Lord giving me a vision of a door shutting? And like it's mad. Well, guess what? Either that next morning or that same, uh, that next morning or that morning after I had the vision, one of my employees quit. And that employee, um, in my opinion, 
in my opinion, had a lot to do with some growth that we were about to have, okay? And you know what? It turns out that God knew what I needed all along. But let me tell you something. I'm going to go into this Mark 4 real quick for you because this is how I felt. I felt, I've only felt pain like this three times in my entire life because I, here's, the, here's the thing. Here's what I want to point out, okay? I want to point this out to you. That during this time where I had everything, I had, you guys need to share this, man, because somebody needs a word of hope. I'm telling you, somebody out there needs a word of hope. Somebody, I'm telling you, man, every Monday at seven, you need to join in because somebody out there needs a word of hope. And I'm telling you, you guys need to get this because right now what I'm about to teach you is when you feel, when you feel like Jesus is at the bottom of the boat, not listening to you, you need to pay attention to the next five to 10 minutes because Jesus, ooh, man, you need to pay attention. You need to share this afterwards because you never know. You never know. You never, 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 never know who, who this is going to help. But you need to pay attention. If you feel like you're in the middle of the boat and you're just rocking back and forth, the life's hitting you left and right, you feel like you're getting smacked by one of those pool noodles. Anybody ever got fat? And the reason why I say pool noodles is because pool noodles are the most annoying thing in the world, right? You can have somebody hitting you with a pool noodle really hard and it sucks. Or, or you can have somebody just hitting you with a pool noodle just a little bit. But they're hitting you a lot and it's obnoxious. It's, it's obnoxious. It can really hurt. I had one of my best friends, Wesley, <laughs> last year, a bunch of us were in the pool and we were smacking the bejesus out of each other with pool noodles and it hurt. Anyways, so my point is, <laughs> I don't know where I scrolled off on that, but this employee I thought had a lot to do with my future. And, 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 um, but the reality of it is, is sometimes God brings people in your life just for a season. And, and you think that they're there forever. You think you have the perception of this person's going to be forever in my life. But the reality of it is lots of times the Lord will bring upon the right person for the right time for the right season. Right. And, and this is what I'm going to go into just real quick. Um, because, because that, that employee quit and my whole world turned upside down. My whole life turned upside down. I was like, Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to write a check for X amount of dollars for this property on Thursday or Friday. I've already spent X amount of dollars on equipment. I've got a X amount of dollar construction loan ready to go. Like what? What? Like God, I'm doing the things that you told me to do. Have I been perfect? No. Have I messed up? Yes. But God, what's going on? Why am I in this situation? Nothing. I, I cried my eyes out, man. I, I, I bawled. I was like, God, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Satan came through and capitalized on that question right there. Mm, man, some of you guys are going through a, tr a struggle right now. And you're asking God, what did I do wrong? And you know what that question does? That question opens up Satan to say, you know what? I'm going to use all the scripture in the world to shove condemnation down your throat. You know what we should be asking? God, what do I need to do better? God, give me a scripture reference of something that I can learn. God, what, what, what? What can I do better? Well, what more can I do right? What you, you see what I'm saying? The, 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 there's, there are ways to ask questions that open up the door for Satan to come in and answer. And there are ways to ask questions for God to come in and say, hey, this is what you need to work on. How we phrase things is so important. It says that the power of life and the power of death is in the tongue. I'm telling you. You know what I got? You know what I got when I asked that question? I got Ezra 4 and I got Isaiah 59. And I thought that God was mad and just upset and frustrated and that judgment had fallen on me. You know what Ezra 4 talks about? Ezra 4 talks about, in a nutshell, you're building your foundation, uh, uh, you're building the foundation of a rebellious city. And I'm like, oh my gosh. No, God, I, I thought this is what you wanted me to do. You picked the fact that you, you picked this property out. You picked these companies out. I didn't even want to do this stuff. 
I didn't want to invest money here. I didn't want to buy this. I didn't want to do this. This is nothing. This is not what I want to do. I mean, if it was my plan, I'd be in Dallas right now, driving a supercar, do what I do, do what I like to do. But God, this has been your deal, not mine. Oh man, I thought this was God. And then Isaiah 59. Oh my gosh, Isaiah 59. I got Isaiah 59 and 12 thrown in my life, thrown in my face so many times last week. It talks about temptation. It talks about falling to temptation. It talks about it talks about it, it, it's the ultimate, it's it's Satan's ultimate way to condemn you. See, there is a difference in between conviction and condemnation. Okay? Conviction draws you closer to God. Condemnation says it's over with. You're done. You know how many times, you know how many times, the, 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 men, mentally, it, it was terrible. You know how many times mentally it said, sell all the trailers you bought, sell all the equipment you bought, pack up, go home, you're done. See, Satan, what he does is he whispers in your ear and he's like, you're done, you're done. That's it, man. You literally have made too many mistakes. Yeah, this is the second go around and you have messed this up again. This third go around and you have messed this up again. Again, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. I was like, oh my gosh, God, what am I going to do? <clears throat> it was rough, guys. It was rough. I, I think lots of times what we need to do is whenever we're going through a rough place in our life, whenever you're going through a rough place in your life, you need to cut out the external voices and only focus on two different types of voices. Number one is God. You, when you're going through a time in your life, mm -mm -mm. see a lot of us, we, we will want to pray for answers, but we are unwilling to commit to God what he wants in order to get those answers. Maybe that's why, that maybe that's why we have so many unanswered questions is because we're not reading. It's because we're not praying. It's because we're not fasting. And God's like, bro, I will give you all the answers in the world as long as you start writing them down and as long as you start asking me, as long as you start praying over, praying over them, and as long as you start reading, praying, fasting, studying, and really walking with me, I will give you those answers. Guys, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the drug addict's life turn around in four, four weeks. I'm talking about, I'm talking about came in all jacked up, tweaked out, left and right. And God loves that man so much. That man is hungry and in turn, just turned his life around completely. Guys, I've seen so many transformations in my life and it all starts with just one act of, I really want to get help. <clears throat> but, but not just wanting to get help, but willing to put forth the work and the effort to get that help. So I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. I went through, I, I immediately, whenever it happened, I started to fast immediately. And I'm not saying that to alkylate myself. Normally, I don't tell people I'm fasting. But my point is, is that if you have a, a something, something in your life that's a big decision, one of the quickest ways to get a hold of God is fasting. One of the quickest ways. But here's the thing. You have to understand that whenever you fast, if you're just denying yourself food, then you're just going hungry. See the the idea behind fasting is that is that is that you take away the um, I ate Dairy Queen for dinner. Oh God, it was good, man. They had this like snickerdoodle cookie dough shake. Oh God, my gracious! But I tell you, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Anyways, <laughs> so my point is is that a fast, a fast is substituting what you need physically for what you need more spiritually. So if you're fasting and you're just not eating, then you're just going hungry, right? The idea behind a fast is to substitute that time. And by the way, here's a tip. You want to get a hold of God? You want to start your day off right? Don't hop on your phone first thing in the morning. No. Leave your Bible next to your nightstand. Or you know what? Download the Bible app. If you, if you want a really good tool to put in your life, I recommend the Bible app. The Bible app is really, really good. You can go on there and anything that you're struggling with, any issue you've got, anything you're struggling with, you can go on there and you can type it in, I'm struggling with this or whatever. And they, they give custom plans that people have taught Bible studies on those methods. They have It's really good, guys. It's really, really, really good. <clears throat> but anyways, find, yeah. anyways, find your apostolic church too. Ooh, man. 
some praise and worship up in there. So a nonstop torment for four days, absolute nonstop torment for four days. I, I I was begging God, God, please change your mind. What's going on? I was like, God, remember that man that, that was about to die and he petitioned you and you added 10 to 15 years to his life. Let that be me. What have I done wrong? God, yeah, I, I mean, I'm standing in the gap for myself like Moses stood in the gap for the people of Israel whenever you wanted to wipe them off the face of the earth. God, please guide me. Let me know what I did wrong. Let me know what I can fix. Let me know what I can, you know, give me another shot. No answer. No answer. You know what I got? Condemnation. Every five minutes or so, Ezra 4. Every other 10 minutes or so, Isaiah 59. Condemnation, condemnation, condemnation. So like I said, you need to reach out to two voices. Number one, you always need to reach out to God first. Number two, you need to make sure you get some good, solid, spiritual people in your life. Okay? These people should be able to tell you the truth and you not get offended at them telling you the truth. And what I'm not saying not in love, but I'm saying that if you're really seeking direction, ooh, there's a difference between seeking your ears to be tickled and getting the answer that you want to hear and seeking the answer that God wants to give you. Because lots of times if you come to a man or a woman of God with an honest and earnest heart, the Lord will speak to them to give you advice or give you information. Now, I'm not saying that's all the time, but I cannot tell you how many times that I've been in a moment where the Lord has been silent and I'm going through something treacherous. And the Lord has given inklings to others because I sought godly wisdom. See, Proverbs says that a wise man, a wise man, Okay, I seek wise counsel. Hey, let me just tell you something. If you doubt, if you're dabbling, or if you if you messing with witchcraft, you're dabbling in addiction, whatever the case may be, it's going to be real hard to get out of your situation if you're asking somebody else that's in the same boat. I'm gonna leave that alone. <clears throat> so I'm going through this tough time. Mark chapter four. Um. And it says, and began, and, and he began to teach by the sea. And whew, man, this is this is good starting out in itself, right? Right? Because Jesus, oh my gosh, guys, I want to tell you something. Jesus will always, whenever you knew and you walk, he'll teach you by the sea. Right? But ultimately, just like what I'm about to talk about in a minute, he ultimately wants to pull you out on a boat into the water. But see, what he does is he realizes that the world is out on the shore. And that's where he gives his general messages. So it says, He began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered together with him. So he got in a boat and sat in it. What Jesus is saying right here is, man, he's like, hey, I started off on the shore. Now on a boat. He's giving an example here. It says, The whole multitude was, was on the land facing the sea. I think that's a lot of us right there. I think a lot of congregations, they, they, they know that there's depth. They know that there are spiritual gifts that the Lord wants them to walk in. They know that there are, are there is a direction that the Lord is pulling them to, right? And what I want to point out here, that if you are teaching somebody from the sea, it means you are walking in the sea yourself. Oh, mm. Get down low. All right, let's keep going. It says, then he taught them many things in parables. And he said to them, and well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring that back. I'm going to bring that back. If, if the Lord is out there teaching you on the sea, what he's wanting you to do is face the right direction. And the right direction is towards him in the waters, in the depth. That is the right direction. You want to go the right direction? You face, you want to go the right direction? You get in touch with somebody who's in touch with the depths. You get somebody, oh man, you want to go the right direction? You get somebody who's standing on the water, Teaching about death. Hmm. Let's keep going. Skip down to verse 35. This is after he got done teaching. He taught about the parable of the sower. He taught about a lot of other things. It says, on the same day, when the evening had come, you need to get this too, you're often going to get tested on what you believe and where you stand whenever the sun is setting. Okay? Whenever it looks like it's just about to get dark, you got to remember where Jesus is calling you to. 
I had I saw some advice from a great friend of mine named Robin Johnson, really great guy, and my pastor as well, but Michael Tall is a great guy. And uh, but Johnson said, you know, he said, he said you you're going through a dark time right now. I said yes, sir. And uh, he said, you know, he said the Lord has promised you all this already. And I said yes, sir. And um, <clears throat> he said, you know, he said whenever I walk in on my porch in the morning time, I see a tree. And he said. Whenever I go to bed at night and I walk up and uh, I walk out on my porch and it's dark, I can't see that tree, but the tree is still there. So my point is, is just because you're going through the dark, just because you're going through the darkness does not mean that that promise is not there. It does not mean that Jesus has just all of a sudden left you. Sometimes, like I said, the teacher is silent during the test. And he said, <clears throat> he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. All right, man. Whew. This is Jesus asking you, are you going to get out of your denominational mindset and start crossing over to, to the other side of truth? Guys, a part of my testimony, I wasn't raised Baptist. I wasn't raised Methodist. I wasn't raised Church of Christ. I wasn't raised, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't care about any of that stuff. I didn't care, which I'm not, I'm not faulting anybody for. It. I'm just saying that I didn't care. I didn't care. As it was, I, I wasn't like... You know, we need to get out of our denominational mindset. My point is, is that if we have only read and studied on Wednesdays and Sundays when the pastor has said something, then we're not walking with God. We're walking with the pastor. Whew. A walk with God is daily. It is reading, praying, studying, fasting. It's a daily thing. It's doing stuff you don't want to do to get closer to God. And once again, I want to point this out, that it's not always sacrifice and struggle. No, you know what, you know what, the, the, do you know what the, the, the outcome of sacrifice and fasting is? A level of higher spiritual authority, a closer walk with God. Man, hmm. let's keep going. And like I said, I'm not faulting anybody. I'm just saying, guys, that, that, that if we don't look at our own salvation, right, we're responsible for our own salvation. You know what, a, a, a great friend of mine Richard Williams gave me a book. It is, I swear I had it earlier. I was reading it. But anyways, it was just saying that it was it was going into how how we are responsible for our own souls. That if there is a teaching that is incorrect being taught to us, it is it is up to us to discern what is truth and what is false. Mm. We need to dig more than what we're digging right now is my point. And he said to him, let us cross over to the other side. Like I said, Jesus is asking you right now just to trust him. And, and he said, he said, he said he's, he's, he's providing you. Oh, man. He said, let us cross over to the other side. He said, um, oh, I forgot my parenthesis deal. I forgot my other parenthesis. You know what? I'm just going to crack it up. It's right here. All right. Here we go. Verse 35. Where are we at? There we go. It says that, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, he took them along the along in the boat as he was. Okay, so 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 he is willing and ready to pull you in the boat with him. Uh, but here's something I want to point out: is is this particular uh, deal? It says he used vessel, right? So, oh man, here we go. All right, so he says, let us cross over to the other side. What he's doing is he's providing you a vessel. Okay. He, he is the vessel. The vessel is the word of God. He's providing you a boat, a vessel to, to weather the storm. And though Jesus isn't walking with us in a physical manner, he's walking with us. He's omnipresent. He's walking with you right now. He said, if you just trust me, I'll bring you to the other side. Um, and, and, and one thing that just got in my heart when I was talking about this is, is, is you, can, you can only blame your circumstances and your surroundings for all your problems so long before you have to realize that your circumstances and your surroundings are not the real problem. Lots of times, the heart is what needs to be worked on. And, and we got to ask ourselves, do we believe what God really says? Like, I'm going to give you an example. If you're out there, you're losing hope right now, and you're sad, and you're frustrated, you know what you need to say? You need to believe what God says. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Who wants a future and a hope? I do. I want a future and a hope. Man, wow. It says... Now, when they had left the multitude, once again, this is 
lots of times, and the only way you're going to grow is by leaving the multitude, okay? And getting in the boat for some solitude time and some one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Remember, Jesus was teaching the multitude, but then he also had some that were closer to him that, 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 that decided to step out on the waters with him. And get this. This is interesting, okay? Get this. and This is, this is really interesting, okay? Um, I, I, a lot of people miss this scripture, but I'm going to point it out. And it says, it says, they took him along in the boats as, he's, well, as he was, and, the other, and other little boats were also with him. Okay, all right, let's talk about the little boats, okay? We need other little boats in our walk with God sometimes. That means people, family, friends, spiritual, high, people that are higher than us spiritually, that have a closer walk with God, sometimes need to be those little boats, right? You know what those little boats do? Whenever you're in your big boat, whenever you're in your big boat and you, and you feel like Jesus is asleep and you want him to jump over the edge, you're looking over to the ground and you're like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know if my daughter is going to get well. I don't know if I'm ever going to find a wife. I don't know what the deal is. And you just, want, you just feel like everything's falling apart. You feel like you just want to collapse. And those people that are in the little boats are looking at you saying, no, you can do it. Stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. You got this. People want. We need to be winning to have people around us that are in little boats. They're saying, you can do it. Keep on fighting. You can make it. Because guess what? Jesus said, let's go to the other side. He said, let's go to the other side. So God has already promised you, you're going to make it to the other side. He's already promised you that. So if there's another side for you, don't forget Jesus is still in the boat, even if you're silent. I mean, even if he's silent. Man, it says in a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat on the boat so that they, they, they were filling. It says, but then he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. This is where I felt Jesus was last week, in the boat, asleep on the pillow. And I was crying. I was begging God. I was like, God, what am I doing the whole time? I'm getting attacked like crazy. I'm like, God, is this you? Am I getting attacked? What's the deal? I've got confusion going on. I don't understand. What did I do? What? what did, what's the big thing that I did wrong? God, what, what's the deal? And I, I, even told, I even told my mom about it. I said, Mom, I said, you know what? I said, I don't know if I am Abraham and God's going to provide a ram in the bush. Whenever I go up, I'm sacrificing my baby right here. Really not my baby. This is God's deal anyways. I didn't want to do any of this in the first place. I keep saying that, but I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound ungrateful because I'm extremely grateful. I'm just saying this was never my idea in the first place. Buying the property, starting new companies, all this mess was his deal, right? I said, I don't know. I don't know if I'm Isaac. I mean, excuse me. I don't know if I'm uh, Abraham about to go sacrifice my son and God's going to provide a ram in the bush. Or I'm Moses. And I just got mad at the people too much and I hit the wrong rock too hard. And I just missed the promised land. I was like, God, which one am I? Oh, help me. Help me, God. Which one am I? For four days, I got tormented. Four days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I lied. I so lied. It was like three and a half days. Sorry. Let me tell you something. I called my old assistant. She was with me for like seven years. And lots of times we have great godly conversations. This is one of my this is this is one of this is one of my little boat people. This is one of my little boat people. And by the way, her, her name is Kristen, and she lost her grandmother today. So if you guys can pray for Kristen and her mom, Donna, that'd be great because they lost a, a, a chunk of their family today. So she's one of my little boat people, right? She's also pretty little. She's like five foot something. But anyway, she's my one little boat people. She's a really great person, but like lots of times, not lots of times, but just one of those, she just explains things different. So we talked. And that night, I, I keep in mind, Lord, Lord, uses, Lord gives me visions all the time. I mean, I mean, I, he uses me all, and I'm not alkylating myself. I'm not alkylating myself to this. I'm just telling you that, that, that my whole world was turned upside down for, for several days. I, I, I reclused myself. I didn't respond to any messages. I didn't reply to anybody. One person took offense to it to the point where they just like, I ain't talking to you no more. And I'm like, but sometimes at the end of the day, we've got to preserve our own walk 
before we can really start to help with others. Because let me tell you something, our walk is most important. Our own walk with God has got to be number one. And granted, here's when I'm not saying don't reach out to people. I'm not saying don't, don't talk to people. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about this was a moment in my life where I needed to be one-on-one with God because I didn't want any other voice from anywhere else influencing where my answer came from except for people that I expect, I, I, I respected spiritually. And by the way, they weren't going to influence, well, I'm not going to say they were not going to influence me, but my point is, is that I had a level of expectation that my prayer was going to get answered one way or the other, whether I completely missed it. And by the way, I actually came to the conclusion and came a couple times that I completely missed it several times. I was like, God, if, if I did miss it and I did mess up and something did really, you know, go wrong, like, I'm okay with it. I'll accept it. I'll take my lick. I will. I will. I said, if I'm Moses and I just missed it, I'll take it. <clears throat> and uh, let me tell you guys, that night, the Lord kept, the, that night was the first time I felt the presence of the Lord in like three or four days. I felt nothing but tur- tur- turmoil, pain, uh, confusion, everything. And the Lord had me up till three o'clock in the morning. And um, he had me up at three o'clock in the morning. And oh, by the way, just as an FYI, if you don't do this, you start, you, you need to start doing it. Something I do every morning, uh, uh, read uh, read a, a few psalms and a proverb every morning. Psalms are a great way, just an absolute great way to get you in a good mood. Proverbs are going to give you a lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom. But the Lord started pouring into me. And I started having a bunch of visions again. And there were, I believe they were of that property. And all of a sudden, all the hope and all the all, everything came back to me. Because you know what I realized is that the teacher sometimes is quiet during the test. And you know what he was saying? He was going to see. He, Jesus. You know what he was going to see? He was going to see if I still believed that there was a tree out there. Which, by the way, a tree represents a seed. And when that seed is water, it grows. It represents a promise growing. He was wanting to see if through that turmoil, through that test, very similar to Job, felt like you lost everything. Are you going to still move forward and still step out on faith. And let me tell you something. I was supposed to close that Thursday. I pushed it off because I wasn't sure. I pushed it off to Friday. And and I'm just telling you, Thursday, that Thursday, um, I went, I got a, I, I, I got, I went to the bank and I, I cut a check for the property. And, or excuse me, I got a check cut for the property. And I told God, I said, you know, I said, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I said, I said, um, pretty much all my spiritual elders in my life that, that really put a, you know, really put a, 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 a really decent sized voice in my life have said that they thought this was condemnation and this didn't sound like God whatsoever that was attacking me. I said, but I, I, I've never dealt with a level of turmoil this big. And lots of times I want to tell you something that, that this is this is one of the best pieces of advice I've ever been given in my entire life. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, you need to share it afterwards. I'm telling you because we need to reach as many people as we can. It's 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 never let darkness dictate your next move. When you're going through trouble and the Lord has promised you all those things and the Lord has promised you every bit of those, every bit of those things, do not let darkness dictate your next move. Don't do it. You know what I did? So I stepped out on faith. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get this check cut. And Lord, I still don't know whether you want me to buy this or not, but I believe that you have brought me all the way this last year and a half to this particular point to buy this particular piece of property. Like I said, the property literally next door was 2.38 acres. I mean, you can't believe, you can't, just can't tell me that's not God. And um, it's like seven acres, a little over seven acres. But anyways, the property next door is 2.38 acres. But anyways, um, and and I got and I cut a check. And uh, that night, the Lord kept me up till like three o'clock in the morning, giving me visions of the property. And I kept pushing, I kept pushing. I was like, God, I got to get more. I got, I got to know for sure. I got to know for sure. And I went to bed with a little bit more peace, but I didn't know entirely. And let me tell you how good my God is, man. I just got to tell you, man. I got to tell you, remember, remember that whole week all I was going was Ezra 4 and Isaiah 59. I was getting condemnation. I was getting you're over with. I was getting you've made too many mistakes. Because guess what? What the Satan does is Satan will throw a scripture. See, Satan tried to use scripture against Jesus, right? 40 days and 40 nights. What Satan will do is he will give you a scripture. And and a, a, a and this is another great piece of advice that somebody gave me. He will give you a, a bit of scripture. And a little bit of it may be true. A little bit of it may be true. Maybe it's about your past. Maybe it's about something you did recently. But what Satan does is he will try to convince you that because a little bit of it is true, that you adopt the entire thing. No. Mm -mm. Don't do it. Don't do it. Guys, 
I woke up in the morning with the Spirit of God all over me. The peace of God, it hit me. I've been praying for peace and guidance and direction and all that stuff. And the peace of God hit me. And, 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 and I woke up with one scripture just as soon. I got three hours of sleep, I believe. I, I feel like the Lord would wake up six o'clock in the morning. Three hours of sleep, I woke up with Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Let me read it to you. Let me show you how good my God is. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I've read this every morning since that day it, it, because it reminds me, it reminds me personally what God brought me out of and how much I learned from it. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. We need to make sure we're pretty bold with our walk with God. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This next one, guys, who you come your soul took about how you Jesus. This next one, this next scripture is what really bro I broke. I broke in tears and just poof. Are you ready for it? If you're with if you're in your Bible right now with me, you already know what it says. What does Psalms, what does Psalms 34? I want somebody to put that scripture in the comments right now. What is Psalms 34 and 4 say? I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Oh, yes. Praise God, man. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Man, if you are there and you resonate with that, or if you want to resonate with that, I want you to pray with me right now because I'm going to tell you something. You know what God has done since then? You know what God has done since then? I tell you what. Whew. Mm. I haven't even had to advertise for a new assistant. Let me tell you something. The Lord provided a family member, came into my office of the person who was my number one choice prior to circumstances before I hired my last one. I'm not saying my last assistant is a bad person. She's a great, 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 great person. Great person. Great person. I shouldn't have said that, but a great person. She came to my office and was like, hey, my daughter's looking for a job. Are y'all hiring? I'm like, ironically, yeah. Turns out it was my number one pick last go-around. She ended up taking a job somewhere else last go-around. On top of that, I've had three people pertaining to the industries that we're going in Asked me about jobs just over the last two or three days, and I hadn't done any advertising whatsoever. Now, you tell me that there's not a God. You tell me that there's not a God. See, God can bring people in your life for a season, and that's what they're there for, a season. I love you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this Bible study. I really hope you got some stuff from it. One thing I always say at the end of every Bible study is sharing a Bible study like this is just like inviting somebody to church. It's a show of character. I really, really, really hope you guys, I don't get anything from this, guys, but I really hope afterwards you share the crap out of this thing. You send it to your friends and your family and messenger because you never know who needs some help. You never know who's in the middle of confusion like I was where Satan is throwing crap at them left and right and they did a word of encouragement. You never know. So I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to speak boldly. I'm going to tell you guys something. I am so excited to bring all of you on the journey that we're going to go through in these new companies. From step one all the way down to the building, all the way down to the formation of everything because you guys are going to be a part of it. I, I, I need prayer for a couple of different things. I need God to send me the right people. I need God to have the right timing. And I need to be aware and willing to receive what the Lord has me to receive whenever he gives it. Whether it be people, whether it be circumstances, whether it be finance stuff, whatever it may be. You guys over the last year have seen this vision grow. And, and now, I'm, now I'm, I'm in a circumstance where I'm opening up more to you guys when it comes to the, the, um, the ins and outs of it. Guys, I love y'all. 
And if you enjoyed this, throw a thumbs up in the comments. Don't forget to share it because sharing it is just like inviting somebody to church. And you never, never know who, who's going to get a breakthrough through sharing something like this. I love you guys. And Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you with a passion and a fire that you have never known. I want you guys, if you're new to this channel, okay, we have a YouTube channel. It's called Christ Built. Okay, and there's a three-part series on that channel on salvation. If you really enjoy tonight, I want you guys to go watch it. It's on there. It says part one, part two, part three. One goes over baptism. Uh, uh, one goes over baptism. Excuse me. One goes over repentance, which is not just asking for forgiveness, it's the turning away from sin. One goes through baptism and explains that you have to be baptized in Jesus' name. You can't just be baptized in Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Not a single person ever was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You cannot find it in the Bible. It does not exist. And number three, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I go through all of that in this three-part Bible study. You guys need to go watch it. Because what we need to do is we need to take off our denominational glasses and we need to put on the glasses of truth in which the Lord wants us to see. I love you guys. If there are any prayer requests in the comments, all I ask you to do, all I ask you to do is don't leave one single comment with somebody is asking for prayer uncommented on. That's like somebody saying, hey, will you pray for me? And you just completely ignore them. That's not what this channel is about. That's not what we're about. This channel is for the big fish. This channel right here is for, is for the folks who want to reach, who want to pray, who want to reach out to people. I love you guys. I cannot wait to take you guys on this journey with me. In fact, if you guys are local, maybe you guys can come out, come out there with me one time. So anyways, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. God, I thank you for you, everything you're doing. Lord, I pray that a blood, Lord, I, I pray a spirit of boldness would rest on each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that if Satan's attacking somebody right now, we rebuke it and we bind it. Lord, we send ministering angels to minister to them. But more important, more importantly, we send warring angels to cut the heads off of every spirit and every demon that is, continue, that is consistently attacking someone. Lord, I rebuke and bind addictions, God. Lord, I pray that you put a burning desire in our hearts right now and anoint our heads, Lord, to follow after you with everything that we've got. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace, and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Listen, if you enjoyed this, uh, like I said, don't forget to share it like right afterwards. Because guess what? If you don't do it right after this, you ain't going to do it. And like I said, I don't get anything from it. You just might help somebody else. I can't tell you how many times that I've seen a video come across that answered my prayer. You know, it's a random video shared by somebody else. So um, anyways, I love you guys. I will talk to you very soon. I will see you next Monday, 7 p.m. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'll see y'all then. God bless y'all.